Welcome back to Breakfast Central. Of course, it's time for sports and Joe Hansen is here. Good morning, Joe. Good to see you again. Good morning. Can you hear me? Loud yes, and can. clear. Really? Can you hear me? <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> yes, Osage, who won the Champions League again? Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Oh, really? Absolutely. Oh, I see. It was, it was weird for me because I had to host, you know, the uh, UCL final event for a particular brand. And so... You know, even if I was supporting Real Madrid, I had to act like I was so hurt. Because you the know. particular brand in question was, was Team Liverpool. Yeah, exactly. Mm. They, they were, you know, they you know, they have a partnership with, with Liverpool, and so I had to feign like I was so hurt, like oh, <laughs> but in my heart, ooh, he was rejoicing. It was cool, Joe. Uh, Joe, I'd like to ask: Did you see the outcome of the match playing out that way? Because Liverpool did seem very confident that they were going to win the Champions League. We saw Jurgen Klopp talking about how they were very certain that this was. Their turn was their time. I, 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 anybody who walked with me on Saturday this past week, I mean, we had an event here at New Central, a good partnership, which we're also going to talk about hopefully tomorrow. Uh, but I make mention that I want Real Madrid to win and Liverpool not to. The reasons are because uh, a lot of people said Real Madrid's uh, victory or getting to the final uh, seemed to be a bit of a fluke where they tried their chances, especially Ancelotti trying his chances uh, once in a blue moon by bringing in Rodrigo, who always ends up being the helper. And then Karim Benzema, who is one man who has definitely stood the test of time. But beating Chelsea, uh, Paris Saint-Germain, uh, Manchester City, and then facing Liverpool, my thoughts was this. They should win, and they did. As you can see on the screen, there was celebration galore, no doubt, this past weekend. And I'm not saying that I do not like Jürgen Klopp or Liverpool or something, but I'm just saying that I think the best team should actually win because they've put in all the work and they deserve to actually win uh, the UEFA Champions League. And that's exactly what we saw. And Carlo Ancelotti also, for me, shows that one thing that we all can learn from. Sometimes go to a place where you know your experience will actually have a major impact. It's a lesson for me because sometimes you have an experience or you experienced a person or coach based at a workplace or a job or a duty or a tax or a skill and then you go to a place where you try to impute that experience and it's not working. A case in study, Everton, and he just had to say, you know what, let me go back to Real Madrid and definitely he proved to the world that he is indeed an experienced coach. Chewing his uh, gum like nothing more. <laughs> Don't forget, he's also coming back of winning the Spanish La Liga as well, where he was, you know, puffing all of that and uh, wearing all his sunshades. You think for an old man, does he need to be all that charismatic? <laughs> well, but it really just showed, you know, the difference between both teams. You know, one team has won the Champions League, what, 14 times now? They have the experience. And look at the players, you know, that, you know, make up the Real Madrid team. Um, no disrespect to Liverpool, but these are complete legends and they, the, the team is filled with legends people who have played the champions league multiple multiple times liverpool's team yes you know pretty interesting fiery team they definitely deserved it because they walk out for it but you know in comparison real madrid 100 percent showed that they are champions league material and not liverpool i agree i agree to that every single word you've said Osage, is indeed true uh, one quick analysis on that match, which I'd like to highlight as well, and that's the man, Devinicius Jr., who indeed pulled the big goal stunner. Let me tell you this very quickly. It was a clear-cut case. Um, I'm not saying I'm a tactician here, but I can say this, uh, bringing my acumen to the fore, um, Osama again, of course, Olive, that I could play the role of a tactician if care's not taken. <laughs> and that's exactly what I had thought about. Now, Carlo Ancelotti, all he needed to do was ensure that he deploys his wingers and they continue to put a lot of pressure on Liverpool's defence. Why do I say so? Now, he pulled Vinicius on the left flank. He was indeed causing problem on that left flank, attacking. Of course, you know, Vinicius is always used to cutting in. And then he put Valverde on the right, who was also a monster on that night, giving problems to the Liverpool defence. Now, what did this do to the Liverpool side? It made it difficult for their wing-backs, who are usually known to go forward, to attack even more powerfully. Now, example, you had um, Robertson who couldn't go forward. Uh, Trent Alexander, who decided to defy the odds and say, you know what, I can go forward, I can still come back. But he was caught. And that's where Vinicius scored that goal. Unbeknownst to him, he didn't see his back. And Vinicius came back, uh, just sneaked behind him. And of course, put that ball at the back of the net. So what's the lesson here? It's just about a tactical know-how. And that's what Carlo Ancelotti uh, showed in that match. But you know what? We'll keep talking about uh, the UEFA Champions League if time permits us. Let me bring Absolutely. to you guys another latest updates from the world of sports. Now let's go straight to something different. Now Egypt 
once again dominated play at the International Table Tennis Federation ITTF Africa Cup Championships, which ended at the Molade Okoya Thomas Hall of Teslim Balogu Stadium at the weekend. The Egyptians won the continent's titles in the men and women's singles categories. Battle for the title began in the women's cadre as teenage sensation and world under 13 number one Egypt's Hana Goda overwhelmed Nigeria's Fatimo Bello in a one-sided game. Uh, the teenage star took the 2021 winner of the table tennis event for the National Sports Festival to the cleaners, defeating her by a full set, nothing. Now, in the men's challenge, Asar Omar regained the title after a 43 defeat of New World number 10 Quadri Aruna in a keenly contested duel. Aruna began on a shaky note but uh, steadied ship afterwards at 3 3. Uh, the Nigerian was leading in the challenge until he sprained his leg while attempting to return a ball. After the incident, Aruna could no longer compete favorably due to the pain. The development eventually cost him the title in front of his home fans who thronged the venue in large numbers to cheer him. Egypt also claimed the third spot. I'm talking about Mohamed El Beaili and Daina Mishref and fourth Ahmed Saleh and of course Maryam al Darabi positions in both the men and women's singles events. But let's do this. Let's quickly bring you um, uh, some of the re reactions uh, to that particular game and encounter and of course that competition here on Breakfast Central. I wanted to win. It, it was like my goal of the year this year, this tournament. So thankfully I won, thankfully. I'm very, very happy about it because I wasn't expecting it at all. Like I just fighting like this to go to the quarterfinals for losing but I'm happy I, I got I was the second I believe I will do better next time. I hoped I could uh, I could have achieved better uh, but I really tried my best and I've prepared very well before this competition uh, and I lost very very close 11-9 in the seventh so at the end this is sports and sometimes you have to win sometimes you lose I will keep trying. I'm very happy. I'm, I'm always happy to play in Lagos. I, I feel home. The crowd is very nice. And um, yeah, I'm very happy and relieved. I'm very happy and satisfied with my performance. Of course, I really wanted to win, but it was not meant to be. But it's one of those things in sports. And uh, the best thing to do now is to recover very well and start to play again. Lagos is gradually presenting itself as the home of table tennis in Africa. And Africa, I'm sure Africa will be proud of Lagos. You can see the ambience, you can see the crowd, you can see the players. And if you interview the players, you will see how happy they are to be in Lagos. And even the president of ATTF told the whole world that every year he's ever, he's ever looking forward to being in Lagos. And so up Lagos, Lagos has done it again and we brought out the best in the game of table tennis in Africa. No doubt, one word I picked out from the mouth of everyone who spoke was H-A-P-P-Y, happy, happy, happy. And yes, they were happy. Uh, you could take that to the bank. But let me also wrap up the sports updates on a Monday morning to tell you that uh, U.S. Uh, Monastere were crowned champions of the Basketball Africa League, BAL, and this was over the weekend after 83 to 72 victory of Petro de Luanda. Now, fresh from knocking out last year's champions Zamalek of Egypt, the Tunisian side won their first ever African title with a victory over the Angolans in the Kigali final. After the game, uh, Ball, that's uh, Basketball Africa League president uh, Amadou Gallo Fall, presented uh, the U.S. Uh, Monastere with the uh, Ball Finals trophy and Michael Dixon with the Hakim. Olajuwon Award for Best Player of the Tournament. Dixon finished the competition with uh, per game averages of 16.5 points and 4.1 assists and a team record of 21.3 points per game during the playoffs. What a fantastic player it was. And we can say that it was indeed a fantastic weekend. Great things that uh, took place in the world of sports. And I'm sure that you all got all the action like I did. So that's the latest uh, coming from the world of sports uh, from the UEFA Champions League, the IWTF, and of course, not forgetting to the basketball Africa League. Back to you guys, Osage, and of course, um, Olive, who really good I scene, think uh, was rooting for Liverpool. Yeah, <laughs> really good scene, Aruna Kaudry. Um, again, he has had, you know, such a phenomenal career in tennis uh, for Nigeria. Um, and we hope, you know, and I've said this before, you know, I hope that, you know, a new, you know, youngster, you know, comes and fills those shoes, you know, um, you know that he's, uh, he's, he's filled for such a long time.
All right. Absolutely. And also, before we let you go, Joe, we've spoken about Liverpool, and it's unfortunate to see what happened beyond them not winning the game. We did see that there were reports that some of the fans outside the stadium faced some uh, chaos, really, because they did ended up being tear gassed, and that there are reports that there will be investigation carried on in this regard. It just seems very unfair to them. Their blames being transferred here and there from the fans to UEFA, UEFA back to the fans, back and forth. But I look forward to seeing how the investigation plays out in this regard. Well, we we'll, we'll look forward to that. Uh, crowd violence, crowd control, and all of that is, is usually what you see when it comes to a final of this magnitude. Remember, this was a final of the finals. It's been a long time since we saw that crowd show up, and they showed up in numbers. That game had to be postponed. Yes, it was, for another 30 minutes or thereabouts. And of course, you do have fans who are usually very stubborn. They just want to find their way into uh, the uh, football pitch or the stadium just to ensure that they can have that experience. But you know what? I would say one thing to Liverpool. Try again next time. Uh, without your fans or with the challenges your fans had, I mean, you should have put up a great display. They tried, don't get me wrong. But you know what? Who was stronger definitely was stronger. That's Real Madrid. No, words can't even express what it would feel like to be on that stage as a Real Madrid player. That, that is the peak of football gratification. There, there's nothing bigger than being on that stage um, um, uh, as a Champions League winner. Absolutely so, so, nothing. So before I go, two things come out from that game as well. Saige, you've said it all. Um, one of the things that come out from that game is, is Karim Benzema going to win the Ballon d'Or? Is he going uh, to win the Ballon I mean, d'Or from he, this? He definitely has a stronger chance now. I don't think any, I, I can't think of anybody else who has had a more fantastic football year than Karim Benzema. Um, exactly. So he definitely stands a strong chance. Sad to also see Marcelo be leaving um, Real Madrid as um, and Manny, Sadio Manny as well. Yeah, yesterday, he came out and said he's going to Germany. Yeah, pretty sad.